Good morning, this is Randy. I've been thinking about this and I wondered if anyone else out there has noticed a connection between history and politics and the interests of the narcissist. So my narcissist was a history major and he watches uh, political television pretty much 24-7. He may not even be watching it, but it does need to be on that channel and it needs to, TV needs to be on in the background at all times. And uh, he also signs up and gets a lot of political email. So what is it with history and politics? I think the politics part is just having a reason to bitch. Maybe connecting with that victim mentality of what the other side is doing to us and how we need to fight it and kind of a way to get upset and irritated kind of that jumping off point to focus on all the injustices and all the wrongs of the other party the history part I think is for some reason the idea of Stalin, Hitler and Machiavellianism keeps coming up wars um, it's that kind of history and uh, laws laws also that kind of history um, is an interest of the narcissist mine anyway and I have heard a few other people comment about it and I wanted to compare my experience to others to see if uh, there's any theories out there about why history seems to be such an interesting topic actually history was my worst topic in school I never cared about it um, was not interested in things that happened, you know, in the last century, in the last war. Uh, I don't keep track of wars. Um, I do have political views, but those political views have become diluted and uh, I have much less of a commitment to the original side that I had been on because I see the flaws in it and uh, the leaders on both sides that are completely untrustworthy. So basically I have uh, lost any interest in politics that I did once have. The history thing is something that puzzles me. There's also some weird attachments that the narcissist has to certain books like, I don't know, I'll mention it, The Old Man and the Sea. I never read it, but my narcissist was attached to this book. He also was attached to going to old bookstores and buying old old books that he would I guess read um, I don't know if he'd read from cover to cover but the old man in the sea um, I don't really know what it's about but the old man part I think is what caught the narcissist's interest for some reason he he thinks he's wise or he aspires to become wise which he never will obviously 
He's actually getting worse and worse with age. But even as a young man in his 20s, um, very pe preoccupied uh, with a couple, just a couple, a handful of books that I think he would read over and over again. Um, I don't know if it was for lessons or if it was to try to um, help himself rationalize his point of view on things. So if anyone knows that book and kind of what the moral of the story is, um, please let me know in the comments. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is about how uh, the narcissist will likes to give directives and directions and orders and demands and... Um, they are demands and directives uh, for you to do something for them that they, they don't necessarily want to do, but they want you to do it uh, in a certain way so that, and actually they set you up to do something and then it will not be right or good enough even when you didn't want to do it in the first place. So rather than be appreciative, um, they will criticize you or find that as a way to give some more directives because it helps them feel powerful. One thing that the narcissist did, um, he never wanted to exercise or do any kind of physical activity um, unless, you know, it was enjoyable. Um, it was not for the reason of getting physical activity and I, I do understand that I mean of course I also don't really like exercising and um, but I know I need to kind of get out there and go for a walk or whatever um, need to keep moving my body so I find ways that are enjoyable as well like bike riding going for a walk but um, once in a while I would you know be at home and I don't know, feel like I needed to do some sit-ups or do some lay on the ground and do some stretches or, um, I don't know, even go outside and walk fast. And it was interesting because the narcissist would mention that um, he, he should be my trainer. Oh, my God. And uh, just the thought of that was so repulsive. Um, like... The fact that he saw himself to be in a position of, you know, wanting to be my trainer, like wanting to watch the pain, like sitting there and going, you know, give me 10, you know, um, one, two, three, faster, faster. Um, the, he imagined himself in that role and, um, having someone as a trainer, uh, you know, the whole idea is, uh, sickening to me. Uh, I, the last, that's the last thing I need is, is somebody, um, that's pushing and pushing me to continue suffering and pain. Um, but he actually got off on that idea and then he would chuckle and laugh. And so I couldn't really even do any kinds of sit-ups or calisthenics just, you know, while watching TV or sitting there because he would, uh, swoop in and all of a sudden start telling me, you know, that I needed to do it harder or more of them or, you know, he'd want to start counting and, and, uh, you know, becoming that kind of a drill sergeant which was totally, you know, un, unasked for, unwanted. Um, I just wanted to be kind of left alone um, in, in peace if I wanted to do a sit-up or two, you know. And um, he would want to be the, my trainer. He would say that, you know, this is what uh, he I needed and he could help me with this. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. The thought of it is just just so gross, um, and that's the last kind of role that I wanted to picture him in or have him be in is that role of, 
you know, authority and um, <laughs> the drill sergeant, you know, but, you know, that that's that hierarchy that they want to be in, that they feel that they already are in, a, that they're above you for some reason, that they're the authority. And in the male-female dynamic, you know, of course, it, you, you know, it oozes of misogyny and it feels really icky to have a, a man uh, that, you know, not, not encouraging at all, but actually just irritating and uh, directive and, and acting so, like, pompous. Uh, so I did want to mention that uh, idea of him really enjoying the thought of being my, my physical trainer, despite the fact that he himself doesn't do any kind of exercises and, and has no knowledge of calisthenics or, you know, the proper way to um, use the body f for certain kinds of resistance or or to um, assist in any kind of, you know, pressure points of strengthening different parts of the body. He knows nothing about that. Um, all right, well, that's all for now. Thanks for listening.